bank of the St. Croix is Yankee, Maine. The other is Canadian, New Brunswick. During the war of 1812, residents on both sides took a pledge not to fight each other. However, a 40-year boundary dispute got going in the early 19th century. The Saruspic War was finally settled in 1842. The only recorded bloodshed was a battle between British and Yankee soldiers. All hostilities took place inside a tavern. Both sides were sharing. Now, of course, the St. Croix is a great river loaded with sporting fish and spine-tingling rapids. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another adventure. It's early July and Jess and I are back out again on the St. Croix. This is our first trip down through here this year. We were late leaving yesterday, as is normal with us. We put in at Vanceboro late Saturday afternoon and paddled four kilometers down to the campsite at Gravel Pit. We set up camp and had some fire-baked pizza for supper. We packed up camp and had bacon and eggs for breakfast before hitting the water again for a long, hot day on the river. After paddling a 4.85 kilometer stretch, in which Jessica caught her biggest bass yet. I'd say that's probably your personal bass so far. I think so. We stopped at the campsite at English Cove for a lunch of ham and bacon wraps. Man, 
and it is something low through here. I stopped at Halls Brook to take a little break and I see someone's built a bushcraft shelf here. Whew, that sun is warm today, which is crazy because it actually got down to like almost frost levels last night. It was like three, four degrees probably. It's pretty wild the difference in temperature between night and day around here. From there, we paddled another 6.63 kilometers down to Little Falls. The water was too low to paddle over the falls, so we had to portage five trips at roughly 200 meters of rough terrain both ways to get a canoe, kayak, and all of our gear and supplies around. Probably weren't going to be getting over there. So it's the morning of day three now. We've got everything packed back in the boats. We're at the bottom of Little Falls here. Yesterday was a hard day. Oh, I was so sore by the end of it. Me too. It was really hot yesterday and the river's really low right now, but at least it wasn't as cold last night as the night before. Oh, thank goodness for that. It was nice to actually sleep with the flap open, but it's gonna be another hot one today. Oh, so people were here just on the night. After breakfast, we packed everything in the boats once again and paddled the short 2.2 kilometers down to our third and final campsite at Duck Point. If you guys have followed my videos for any time, you'll know that when we come to camp at Duck Point, oftentimes this fire pit's in worse shape than any of the fire pits on the river. I think a lot of people stay at this one. But the ring's in really good shape. It's not torn all apart. There's only a little bit of paper in the pit. They actually left behind some cut and split wood as well, so whoever the last people were that stayed here, thank you. Although I don't know what they were doing with this. I see this tree that I pointed out in one of my videos last summer had broken, finally came down at some point since then. Thank you. 
timing worked out with when we were going to be out here, so we figured we'd play some radio bingo. Supper on night three is some pulled pork that we actually got from a barbecue fest that went through town about two months ago and I dehydrated it. So no big winnings on bingo, eh babe? No, not tonight. Not even close on the last game. But at least we could use a few of the cards to start a fire tonight though. That Border Patrol helicopter was really low, a lot lower than I normally see them, and it's flying a grid pattern instead of just following the river like they normally do. So I have a feeling they're looking for somebody specific. Tuesday was a warm but windy day, a good day to be lazy, and that's exactly what we did. We spent the day playing games, listening to music, and fishing along the riverbank. Well, it's the beginnings of a bird anyway. We spent day four as a lazy day here at Duck Point because we both needed a rest. It's been real nice today for the most part, except it did rain for a few minutes, but the wind today, oh my gosh. It's usually breezy here at this spot, but the wind's been crazy here today. Like, blow you right off your feet almost crazy. Literally twice earlier, there was wind gusts big enough that I stumbled when they blew me. I'm glad we're not on the water today, but we did see two big groups go by. They looked like they were still having lots of fun. It's been so windy today that we've actually had to move deeper into the woods to cook. I'm looking forward to that beef stroganoff for supper, though. Me too.
Breakfast on day five is some apple cinnamon oatmeal. I chopped up some apples at home and dusted them with cinnamon and nutmeg. Then I dehydrated them and mixed them with some oats. Yesterday evening and last night both turned out to be really nice, but this morning and this afternoon have both been way nicer than yesterday, which means swim time. It's day five of this trip and this Coleman cooler is still holding ice, which is awesome considering I found this in this river pinned up against a rock a few summers ago. It's got a little dent in it and it's missing one handle, but other than that it works perfectly fine. Somebody else's loss is my gain. Jess and I always bring travel games on these trips. New for this year is a game we found called Bananagrams. It's sort of like Scrabble. Bananagrams. <laughs> Bananagrams. It is kind of a weird word. It is. So the object of this game is you each start with 21 lettered tiles and you put the rest of them face down and then you each start going through one tile at a time and whoever can build words and get through all the tiles in the bag first wins. It's been a few days now my makeshift clothespins are still holding up. We decided for supper on night five was going to be some rehydrated homemade chili. Today turned out to be a super hot one, so we just stayed put here and took advantage of a nice hot summer day in the woods. It was a real lazy day. We set up our cots outside, 
and basically just alternated between sun and shade, sitting and laying all day long. I think I may get a little bit too much sun today though, because it's not even 9.30 yet, and I'm pretty much ready for bed. Day six now, it's overcast. We saw a deer across the river when we were getting breakfast together this morning, so that was pretty cool. We've mostly just been using the limbs from this big fallen tree and the smaller trees that it took down around it for firewood for the last few days. This one needs to come down anyway, so it's gonna make good firewood. Day six was the wet one. We had originally only made firm plans for a five day trip, but we always bring extra supplies when we have a window open to extend a trip. Neither of us were ready to go home yet, so we listened to the weather forecast and made the call to stay. The call was based on a quote, chance of showers, which is apparently exactly what they got in town. We, however, got rain and thunder from around 3 p.m. until about 10 p.m. Luckily, we were well prepared and the company was good. So what's for supper on day six, babe? Uh, tonight we're gonna have rehydrated spaghetti sauce with pasta. Nice. like a pretty hearty meal. Oh, looks so good. So we're six days into a trip now. This is actually the longest trip we've ever taken together now, just the two of us. A camping trip anyway. So that's pretty fun. Uh, it's rained pretty, well not heavy today. No, not too bad. Once in a while it's rained heavy, but it's rained on and off most of the day today. But it was nice for the most part for the rest of the trip, except for day four was windy. Whichever day it was, it yeah. was really windy. Day I four, know. I think. I think it was day yeah. four. Things started to blur together. <laughs> yesterday was a really nice day. Yeah, so. yesterday was definitely the nicest day of the trip. And it's supposed to be nice again tomorrow, so. The mosquitoes have been bad, though. Yeah, I haven't seen anything like it here. Oh, man, like, yeah. usually the mosquitoes, especially at this site here at Duck Point, like, it's fairly breezy here most of the time, so it, it doesn't get as bad here with the mosquitoes, but this time, last night especially, holy. Yeah, we had to take cover for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we were just sitting down for to have a campfire, and we were just, like, covered in mosquitoes. Yeah, head to toe. So, we went and laid in the tent for a bit and watched a video on my phone that I had downloaded, so that killed some time. We laid in the tent for a bit today while it was raining and played a few games, played some Trouble and some Yahtzee. Right. Uh, there was... Pretty big thunderclaps today earlier though, like long ones. They were off in the distance, but I counted one, it was 60 seconds yeah. that we could hear the rumble. Last year on one of our last trips, I started to read a book, 438 Days, 
Well, I never finished it last summer, and as many times as I tried to pick that book up again throughout the winter and even earlier this year, I just never found or made the time, but this trip, I managed to read it. I restarted it, because who's going to start a book 25 pages in a year later? Uh, but yeah, I started and finished that book on this trip, so happy about that. Read the whole thing cover to cover. I did. Now you're on to another book. I am. That one is Beyond the Trees. By Adam Schultz? Yes. And the other one, I think, is by Jonathan Franklin. Jonathan I Franklin. I think. And that one's called 438 Days, which took you nearly 438 <laughs> days to read. Um, with a long break in between. That's right. Yeah. But the story was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was quite the story. I want to maybe read up a bit more on that when I get back. You don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's about a guy that gets stuck out at sea on a 25-foot boat. Right, yeah. For 438 days. Yeah. That's wild. The water's been really low on this trip, which made day two. Was that the day we were portaging? Yes. Yes, that was a really hard day. Because between trying to steer around rocks all day on the low river and then portaging all our gear around Little Falls because it was too low to go over, that made for a pretty hard day. Yes. It's we very were both. Warm. It was really warm, yeah. too. So. I, we made out okay during that day, but the next day, I yeah. was sore. We were feeling <laughs> I was it. sore. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the river is still pretty low until we got down here at Duck Point, and then when we got up the next day, which would have been day three, I think. Yeah. That's when we noticed that the river had actually come up some. You can tell because there's two rocks out in front of us, in front of the campsite here, that have logs perched on them. So we've been keeping an eye on the water level on those rocks and how close it gets to the logs. So we can tell the water level has come up a little bit. So hopefully when we leave tomorrow, the paddle out will be a little smoother. Yeah. A little less bumpy. A little less bumpy, yeah. <laughs> but overall, it's been a great trip. <laughs> I froze there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, classic. Deer in the headlights. Especially considering it was kind of impromptu. We only really settled on taking this trip about a week ago, so things yeah. came together good. Yeah, and even still, we had planned for a four-night trip, and I think the night before, we were throwing more food in the barrel and said, just in case. Yeah, we had the time off, so we weren't sure what the weather was going to do, but we packed enough food and water and stuff just in case, and we're both glad we did. Yeah. We finally got the seven full days together out here on the river on the St. Croix. There's been plenty of times we've tried for five nights and got as far as four. As far as we got, and every year it's like, all right, we'll try again. Yeah. It'd usually be a great big thunder and lightning storm or a hurricane or something coming, so we'd end up having to pull out early, but this time we did it finally. Yeah. Thankfully. You caught your biggest bass to date on this trip, too. You've actually outfished me on this trip. I only actually hooked one and got a hold of it. I got a few that got away, but... Oh, yeah. That fish was big. Was that the first fish or the second fish I caught? Because one of them... That was the second The one. second one. Yeah, the first one threw me for a loop. I thought I was stuck. So I kept trying to paddle towards <laughs> where I thought I was stuck, and lo and behold, there was a fish on the other end that was pulling me around. Yeah, so. that was a big fish. Yeah, but, but you that... didn't get that one up. But the one that you did get... Up in the net. That was a big yeah, fish. That was really big. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty happy with that one. Hopefully tomorrow I can catch a bigger one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no more hook and release for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that log we were talking about right there. The rock's almost completely covered now. The water's come up high enough. If we get a break in the rain, we may actually have to bring the canoe up on shore and flip it over. We've already drained it out once. It's already got quite a bit of water in it again. Rained pretty hard today for what called for 
showers. Showers, yeah. A chance of showers. A chance of showers. And a chance of, what was it, thunder? A chance of thunder, yeah. <laughs> There's a saying here on the East Coast, if you don't like the weather, just wait an hour. <laughs> nice we were able to still get a fire going tonight, though. It did clear off, well, mostly clear off. It's still nice and warm. At least we have a chance to dry off before bed. Our final available free day to spend on the river and a gorgeous one that made the rain the day before seem more than worth the stay. Day seven now, which means we've officially been outdoors for one entire week. It's a much nicer day today than it was yesterday, which is nice because all our stuff has had a chance to dry. With as long as this trip has been though, it's still sad to go home, but we've stretched this out as far as we can. We gotta go back to work tomorrow. We're breaking down camp for the final time here of this trip, just to give you guys a quick update on our latest sleep system. As usual, we have our Quishua, I think that's how it's pronounced, three-person pop-up tent. And then indoors. This year we moved to the FE Active lightweight cots. They're less than five pounds. They're really lightweight. They're pretty easy to put together and take apart too. They only take a couple minutes. And we've got the Eureka inflatable pillows. We've got the Ohuhu sleeping bags. And some nice little outdoor pattern quilted pillowcases that Jess made. That's a two person sleeping bag that we just use as two singles. It does feel nice to be back on the water though. That was our home for five days right there. So long campsite, it was a good five days there. coming through this very set of rapids that I found that green Coleman pool. In total, we paddled roughly 22 kilometers, and according to our Fitbits, walked nearly 55 kilometers over the course of the trip. So another fantastic trip comes to an end. Any final thoughts, honey? It was a wonderful trip. I'm glad everything worked out and we had a chance to get out and do it. Me too. Only one day of rain, so that wasn't too bad out of seven. Can't complain about that. Nope.
Uh, don't forget, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Waterborne Camper, and hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't already. We'll see you again soon.